Welcome to the Excuse Generator in JavaScript. For me, this is the perfect first project to combine JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. We're going to build an Excuse Generator like this. We're going to build a sentence that it's going to have three, four main uh, groups. The first group is going to be who to blame, my dog, my daughter, my sister, and then why? Well, because my dog ate my homework or because my dog puked on my homework, whatever. And then what? Basically, what you want to have the excuse of, like, I couldn't come because of, well, I couldn't come is the excuse. My homework is the excuse. And then yesterday, it's, you don't need that. You can just say my dog ate my homework and that's it. But we added a, a fourth group there just to make it more fun. Here are the instructions. Every time you see instructions from four gigs, you're going to see that there's this little small plant that is growing. So that's that's what we put as an icon or as an emoji for starting the project. And then you're going to have clear instructions on how to start the project. In this case, it's telling us to clone this repository, saying this is the repository you need to clone. And this repository, this is a series of files that we have created to help students start new projects on simple JavaScript. The reason we have, um, this is, by the way, this is the, the one. If you copy this URL here, you're going to see that you can just paste it in the browser and it's going to take you to the actual files. And I have them already here in here. And the reason we use this type of files or boilerplates or templates is because we don't want you to be doing it from scratch in your computer. Like usually if you watch a YouTube video or some some other tutorial, they're gonna tell you to start from the command line, probably installing the version of Node. They're gonna tell you to make sure the version that you have for Node.js, because we're gonna be using Node.js. JavaScript is the same as Node.js, by the way. Java, a node is JavaScript on the back end. So yeah, you're going to need some Node.js, blah. And we don't want you to be configuring anything on your computer. That's not what we want. That's that's going to happen to you if you're not studying at 4Gigs. If you're studying at 4Gigs, it's going to be different because we encourage you to start working in real projects and not start working on configuration. Configuration is discouraging. It's difficult and it's not a skill that you need to have to get your first job. And my main goal is for you to have your first job, not to learn a lot. Obviously, learning a lot is it's cool as well, but it's this a secondary goal. So uh, I want you to learn a lot as long as it will not limit your chances on getting a job. And when it comes to configuration, I think configuration will limit your chances on getting a job because you're going to be focusing on the wrong things. The right thing to get a job is to get the skills for building the project, not for configuring the project. Configuring the project is something that it's done usually by senior developers. So you don't have to worry about that right now. You can worry about that later. It can be in a month, in three months. It doesn't matter. Right now, just focus on building the project, please. That's why we have built something called the provisioning bridge. You can hear more about that if you go to provisioning for geeks.com slash provisioning. And here we are explaining how we have set up our entire ecosystem in a way that you can have all your tutorials. You can start working on your tutorials right away without having to set up anything. This is a big effort that we have made. and. It's super cool and it's something that you're going to appreciate a lot. So I recommend you reading this. It's not a long read, look, and it's going to give you the context on why we're doing the things we're doing. So knowing about that, we want you to open this template already that it's part of the provisioning bridge that we developed. So you're going to open it with uh, code spaces or with Git pod. It doesn't matter. You're going to open it. It's going to take a second to open and it's going to come already with a lot of files. I am not going to explain these files here. There is another video explaining those files, and you can probably find that video here in the, when you open the preview in the readme file, or you can also find it if you type start.4geeksacademy.com. We have a tutorial there for every boilerplate that we have. Like this is the Vanilla.js one, so you can just read the docs, and it's going to take you to 
further notes on why we build this template and how we build it and everything. And it's going to have videos as well explaining everything. So I'm not going to be explaining all these files right now, only the ones that I'm going to be using that you that I care for this tutorial. Like, for example, here, it's already telling you in the readme that to run this, you have to say first npm install. So we're going to do it, npm install. This is going to install all the libraries and dependencies you're going to be using in the project, and then npm run start. So npm run start. Look, here it is, npm install, and then type on the command npm run start in the command line. So I'm just going to do that. And then it says, where do I write my code? It depends on the language, but you have an app.js, a styles.js, and an index.js. So those three things are where you're going to be writing your code. Look, my, my server is already running. I can open it in a browser, and it's going to show you some default code. Look, it's saying, if this text is not centered and yellow, you probably have an error. And it is centered, and it's in yellow. So we don't have an error. And then it says, hello, Rigo, and Rigoberto here is uh, a little baby. So that means the, the boilerplate is running fine. I'm going to put this on the right side of the screen. And on the left, we're going to have the code. Here it is. Let me make it a little bit smaller. There you go. This is a recommended setup for me to put on the right side your live website. Do not use the internal preview. Sometimes GitHub comes or it will allow you to open like an internal preview like this on the right side like that. I don't recommend that because this browser is horrible. You want to have a real life browser. So open it in a separate window and you can do that by clicking here in the ports and click here on the globe. It will open a new a new window for you and then you can put it on the right side of the screen. So yes, use a real window. Don't use the preview window that uh, VS Code shows on the right. Okay. So if we continue reading the readme, it says that to write the code, it, we need to put it in the app.js and style.js and index.js. So we're going to do that. We're going to, here are those three. Look at the source. That's why it says dot source slash app.js. That means the dot is the beginning. It's the current directory. So it means in the current directory, open the source slash app. So source slash app. There it is. I'm going to put it on the left. And then I'm going to do the same with the index and the CSS. And then I'm, I can collapse this sidebar so that I have more space. OK. So if we continue reading the instructions, remember that we have to build this sentence. And then if you look at the hints, it says, update your index.html with one excuse hard-coded. No JS, just one excuse in pure plain HTML. The excuse must be inside an HTML tag that has an ID assigned. For example, okay, I'm just going to copy this example. Why not? I'm going to put it in my code in the HTML. I'm going to remove this part. Look how I didn't remove this. It says, do not delete this script tag. So do not delete the bottom script tag, please. That's how you connect your JS, your JavaScript with your HTML. So do not delete it. Same happens with this link tag right here. No, not this one, my bad. This is for fun awesome. We don't have the link to the CSS, I think. No, we do because the body. Ah, yeah, it's been done in the JS. Look, it's here. Import style.js. So. I thought that we had a link tag like this pointing to the style of CSS, but we don't have a link tag here. It's being connected through JavaScript. I think that's an important thing as well. Like one thing that happens in a normal website is that everything starts on the index.html. And here you have to put the link tags to your CSS and the script tags to your JavaScript. But when you're working with this boilerplate, and this is how it is for the rest of your life, Developers don't like the index.html or any other HTML file to be the entry of your application. From now on, instead of being the index, it's the app.js. So here is where you're going to be importing all your CSS and other JavaScript files. Okay. So let's just do it. Let, let me. Well, look, here in the HTML, we have the p tag that I paste. It's here. 
is refreshing automatically. If I just put another another character here and save, it's gonna refresh automatically. Look, I didn't hit refresh and it, it's already there, the, the additional K. So that's another important thing. It's gonna work automatically. Let me make this background white because it's annoying. Okay, so I'm just gonna put here background white. There it is, and there it is, the excuse as well. Okay, so now that we have this excuse, here it is, my dog ate my homework. Let's see what the instructions say. It say, using JavaScript, create a function that generates and returns a random excuse with the following structure. So here's the structure. The who, the action, the what, and the when. Okay, I'm just going to copy this. There it is. And then I'm going to paste it here in the JavaScript. There it is. And then these are arrays. So we have, we can add more here. We have the bird, my grandma, the dog, the mailman. This is the people that it's making your life impossible and the reason for your excuse, the main subject. So I can put here, for example, Bobby, whatever, right? I can put whatever I want in this array. This is an array of who. Then this is an array of actions, what and when. We already discussed that at the beginning of the project. The four groups that are going to be grouping your excuse. So now I can, for example, one, one example that I can do is that I can get this p tag using JavaScript. And the way that you do that is that JavaScript comes with, well, there's two ways actually. That was one that I can select this element and put my job, my uh, HTML inside the p tag using JavaScript like this. I can say document dot query selector, and then I can put the exact set the exact same CSS selector that it's being used for this one. So it's going to be hashtag excuse and then dot inner HTML. Hello. And then I'm going to save it and you'll see how it now says hello. Look. So that means that JavaScript is able to modify this HTML right here. This is called the inner HTML. So I can select this element with JavaScript using the ID selector like this. And then I can say, well, I want to overwrite whatever is the inner HTML. So from the opening to the closing tag, from here to here, I want to change that into hello. I can say, I can even put some HTML. Look, if I put an H1, it's, it's funny because the H1 is going to look huge. And there it is. Look, it's big. It, now it's an H1. Another trick I can give you, if you don't know it already, is to always have the inspector. You can right click with the mouse and inspect your HTML. And doing that, it's going to give you clues. It's going to be able, it's going to give you everything you need to know about what you're doing. Like for example, uh, the inspector has all the, the styles here, all the styles being applied to the elements, but also it has the HTML here. Look, so this is the HTML, the live HTML on my website. So it has a P tag with the ID excuse and I can fill inside with whatever I want there by hand. Look, hello world. And you're going to see how it's being updated. Look, there it is. But the original one is not. Look, the original one still says my dog ate my homework in the P tag. So this is the live version of my website. This is the live HTML on the bottom here in the inspector. But on the left, this is the source code, the original HTML. If the HTML gets modified after that by JavaScript or by me by hand here, by, by modifying this, then it's going to be different from the index.html that was the source code at the beginning. So that's an important thing to remember. Then another thing is that obviously you can select elements using the query selector. That would be the equivalent of clicking on that element here. Like I can click on this element and 
it, I am selecting it, and then I can edit the HTML. But it's not the inner HTML, right? So it's the entire HTML, but I can actually edit that. So the same things that I'm doing with JavaScript when I say query selector dot inner HTML, I can do here by hand. Okay, so we have to build an excuse. So if we come back here, you can see here that we have the sentence already spl split in four. So what happens if instead of putting hello world here, we grab one of each of these? So let's try doing it. I'm going to put who, like this. I'm going to put who. OK, so we have this piece here called the who. And then we're going to have another, another piece that is going to be the action. And then we have another piece that is going to be the what. And then we have another piece that it's going to be the when. Okay, I'm going to disable autosave here because um, I don't like autosave for these type of projects, but I recommend you do have it on if you're not used to saving all the time because one of the things that happens with junior developers is that you forget to save, save, save all the time. So that's why the autosave is useful. But I don't forget anymore because I already have it in my mind. I may forget it, to be honest, sometimes. But the majority of the time, I don't forget. So... I, I'm just not going to be using it because I don't like the constant refreshing. I want it to refresh only when I save it. Okay. So my, my sentence is going to have a who, an action, a what, and a when. But I'm not sure if it's in the right order. So let's see. It's supposed to be the who, and then the what, and then the when is the last one. So who, and then the what. then the action and then the when that's cool okay and the reason i'm putting these square brackets here is because i don't know if you remember that arrays if you want to get an element from an array you have to specify the position right so for example in this case this particular array has this will be the position zero because it starts at zero all the time this is one this is two this is three and this is four so if i want to start with Bobby, I can just put here four. And then in this case, let's say that it crashed. So it's going to be two. Because remember, it starts at zero, right? So zero, one, two. And then what? Well, my phone. Let's put my phone as, as the other part. So it's going to be one. And then when... Let me put here during my lunch, whatever, right? Zero, one, two, three. So during my lunch. If we if we save it now, you're going to see that it says here on the right, Bobby, the car P during my lunch. What's the car P? Bobby, crush it. It's supposed to say crush it. And instead of that, it says the carpy. What on earth is that? Well, one thing is that also we need spaces, right? So um, let me incorporate the spaces between the words like that. And then I'm going to put another space here. And then another space here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make sure I don't have any other issues I know that I already have one issue that it's, it says the car, the car in the middle of it. The car is what? Yeah, so I'm I'm wrong. Action goes first. Yeah, my bad. Action goes first. Probably if you were watching this video, you were super stressed about me being wrong and not being able to tell me, but I finally figured it out. Cool. So there it is. And if, if I save it now, it's going to automatically re refresh and it says, Bobby peed the card during my lunch. There it is, my perfect excuse, right? But this is not what we want because if we refresh, the excuse remains the same. And obviously, we have to come up with new excuses if we want to continue uh, avoiding the work. And uh, we have to have new excuses every, every day. So now the problem is that how do we get these numbers to change? Well, for that, my friend, you can randomize these numbers. Like, 
for example, I can have a function now. Let's have a little function here that we're going to call get random. And then inside this function, we are going to pass any array, any array. And this function is going to return a random item in the array. So for example, if we pass who as the array, it's going to return any of these randomly. OK, so what we're going to do for that is that we are going to get a random number from 0 to 4. But 4, it's a dynamic number. It's not going to be always 4. It could be 10. It could be 20 because the array can be anything, right? So we're going to be using the length. So we know that the max, the maximum number that we can have is who.length minus 1. Why minus one? Because we start at zero. So if the length of the array, this one, it's one, two, three, four, five. This one has five items. So that means that the maximum number that we can have, it's four. So five minus one. Okay. And then we know that's the maximum. But what about the minimum? Well, let's have a minimum as well. We can start at zero. That's cool. That's fine. And then we can say, and for this, I, I recommend using um, Google or ChatGPT. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to be using ChatGPT because I want you to. I want to encourage you to start using ChatGPT already for everything you do. Because let's let's be honest, you're going to be using it as well. So I'd rather use it with you than you using it on your own and not knowing what to do. Because using ChatGPT has has a or not 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 necessarily ChatGPT. When you're watching this video, there may be other ones like Gemini, Gemini or any other chat. It doesn't matter. Any chat in the world, you can just ask, but you have to ask the right questions, right? So in this case, since we're already, we already have a max and a min, then we can just say, I want to get a random number in JavaScript from max to mean let's see what happens let's see what happens this is yeah look the the computer already thinks that we have two parameters max and mean so that's great and here it is it gave us the answer so i'm just gonna read it for a second well there's an explanation here but the reason that you're getting this explanation is because and i recommend you do that as well it's because i put here in in my customization in the custom instructions i always want the computer to, I, I added this for the computer to always explain what what she's doing or what it's doing look you carefully provide actual act, thoughtful and nuanced answers that are brilliant at reasoning so i am actually encouraging the computer to give me answers with thorough explanations with step-by-step -step thinking so that's why it's answering me with such a great explanation. So here's the, the entire explanation, right? So it's funny because it's doing a, another function that I'm going to be have to be using on my function. So if you copy this, well, let's understand it together. It's saying math.floor. This is because it doesn't want to give me a number with decimals because usually math.random responds a number between 0 and 1. And it has decimals, so like, for example, 0. Two, three. We don't want decimal numbers. We want whole numbers. One, two, three, four. So that's why it's doing a min, uh, a, a method floor, because it's removing the comma after the number. And then if we copy these here, the content, or we can copy the whole function, actually. I think it's going to be more clear to you if I copy the whole function. We can just say here, let rand random it's equal to get random number from max to mean. There you go. We're using it. Oh, my bad. It's from mean to max. So mean, mean to max. Another thing that is important is you, these variables don't have to match in names, OK? I can call this A and B as long as I keep A and B consistent within the function, OK? My bad, I am already mixing it in the wrong way. I know that A is the minimum. So A and A, and here it's going to be B. So this also works. 
because what matters is the order in which I pass the parameters. So for example, in this case, I'm saying get random number min max. So I know that A is the min and B is the max, okay? I'm gonna leave it as is so you see how, how that it's working. You don't have to call everything min and max only within the scope in which you declared min and max. And min and max was not declared within the scope of this function. It was before when, when it was like this, mean and max, then I am declaring it for in this scope. But since I change it to A and B, it's not declared anymore and it doesn't exist. Mean and mask, mask, max don't exist in this scope. It doesn't exist. If I try to print here and say console.log mean, it's going to give me undefined. Okay? It's, it's not going to know what it is, mean. Because mean was declared within these curly brackets within this scope okay so i'm just going to delete this now that we have this random number we can just say any array return any array at the position random you see so that's great because we know for a fact that random is going to be a number between zero and four in the case of the array who but in the case of action, it's going to be between 0 and 3. And in what is going to be between 0 and 2, because that's the length minus 1. So it's never going to be out of bounds. Out of bounds means that I'm retrieving a, a, an item that doesn't exist in the array. Because if I pass 5, it's out of bounds, because there's no item with the position 5. OK, cool. So we can just call this function here now. We can say get random instead of pass, passing the number four. We're saying get random who, and then get random action. Give me a random item from action. Give me a random item from what, and give me a random item from when. Let's see if it works. I'm just going to save it now and refresh. The mailman crushed my phone undefined. Oh, undefined. That's it. That's interesting. That's good that it's there because then I can fix the bug and explain what's happening here. Why is it saying undefined? I'm going to refresh again. And now it says my bird broke my homework undefined. And then if I refresh again, my grandma peed undefined undefined. Ha. So it seems that we're getting two out of bounds here. One from the, from the what array and Look, it says three here, hard coded. It's my bad, man. It's supposed to say when. That was the problem at the beginning. I was passing three. Okay, let's see again. Refresh. My bird ate undefined when I was sleeping. So we still have an issue in the second one. This is the first one. No, not the second one. My first bird ate. The third one in this one. In the what? We have an error in the what? Let's see. There's no error right now, but if we refresh, if we refresh, there's no error, no error. There it is again. Look, my grandma broke only fine during my lunch. So I think the what it's getting a problem. So let's see. Let's look at it again. I am going to console.log the max, the mean, and any array, so the array that I'm that I'm referring to, and we'll see what happens in the console when we get undefined. So I'm just gonna refresh until I get an undefined. No undefined. No undefined. No undefined. No undefined. Oh no, that's horrible. Maybe I can pause the video until I find a, an undefined. How come I don't have an undefined now? This is horrible. Ah, oh, there it is. So the mailman p undefined before the class so where is that i think it's this one the last one right yeah i think it's the last one so so look i printed max mean so max is four and mean is zero and that is already wrong because it's it cannot have four here. Look, how come it's four? It's not four. Oh, you know why? 
Yeah, because I put who here, and it's not supposed to be who. It's supposed to be any array. So I'm just going to paste this here. Yeah, I was always getting the length of who. In who, it's it's a, a specific length of five. It's never going to work because action, it's smaller than who, and what is smaller than who. So I cannot hard code who here. It has to be any array. The array that was given to the function is the one I'm going to get the length from. So I think with that, I'm going to have a whole the, whole, the exercise as a whole ready. So let's see. Refresh. Everything is perfect. Look, there it is. There is another way to do. The, the exercise is done. So you can stop watching this video. But if you want to learn a little bit more, then there's another way to select this. We don't have to select the whole thing. We can just say here, document.body, I think. Document.body. Dot inner HTML. And I think it's going to work as well, but with it's not going to have a p tag anymore, but it doesn't matter. Let's refresh and look, it's working as well. You see? Perfect. The document body, it's a selector that exists in every single website because I am selecting the body tag here, this one, the body tag. So I'm just saying the inner HTML of the body. So if you look at the elements, it, there's no p tag anymore. Look, I'm going to open the body. Here it is. Here's the body. And if you look at, there's no p tag inside the body. The body starts already with my bird. So there is no p tag. You see? So that's another way. Another another thing that you can do is that obviously you don't have to have this function. You can just put immediately the random number here. Maybe you see that in the, in, a, in a solution. Ah, and I never explained the window that unload and why it matters. And the reason it matters is because if I don't put it, it's going to, I think if I don't put it, it will still work. Let's see if it still works. I'm just going to refresh it and let's see if it, if it works. It is working, look, without the window that unload. The reason we put window that unload is because this code is running super fast. It's running as long, it's running immediately when the website starts running. So that means that there is a chance in which the body is not ready yet. Because JavaScript may be running bef so early that the webs the elements in the website are not available. This p tag may not be available. So let's see. Let me put here again query selector, and I'm just gonna select the p tag as an ID. The p tag has ex excuse. All right, go. So I'm just gonna save this and refresh, and it still works. But it could be a case where this p tag doesn't exist yet. This p tag excuse doesn't exist yet. And JavaScript is running too early. So we tend, it's a good practice to put window.unload because that way you're waiting for the whole website to be available to start using JavaScript. JavaScript should be always the last thing that runs on a website. Uh, to explain it better, you can see this timeline here. Look, look at this timeline. If I refresh, you're going to see the whole timeline. So this here, it's how the website loaded. Give me a second. Maybe I can expand this easily. There you go. So this is how the website loaded. Well, it doesn't show up very clear, this timeline. So I, I rather do a drawing myself. So when a website loads, what happens is that this is a timeline. Imagine this is a timeline. So this is second zero, and the website takes like a second to load, right? So this is second one. So everything within second zero and one is milliseconds, right? So let's say that I type on my browser a URL like google.com or whatever. The moment I do that, I'm doing a request to a server. I'm going to a server. The server, it's going to answer my request. This server is an actual computer running on a cloud like Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services or whatever, and I'm going to get an answer from the server. That answer, it's going to be an HTML document. That HTML document may have inside, it's going to be the index, by the way, may have inside link tags in the head. If some link tags are found in the head, like this one, are found in the head, like this one, this link tag here, 
this link tag will be another request doing to the same or another server. In this case, it's the same server because it doesn't have a domain. But in this case, that is another link tag. It's a different server. Look. So actually, we're doing two requests because there's two link tags. One is going to be to Fun Awesome, and the other one is to. Okay, so there's going to be another request to this server. It's going to be another request to the server. And then they come back. Those requests also come back. When they come back, then you have now your styles. And then the last thing that will happen is that it's going to look for script tags. And then if I have a script tag that we do, then the script tag is going to be the last one to be requested. And the problem is that sometimes this is already too late. Sometimes maybe the website, not too late, my bad. Sometimes the browser already rendered the website and there's there's already a p tag in the DOM here. There's already a p tag. But some other times, this script is too early. It's here. Let's say, let's put it here. And when it's here, the request that is being done to the servers comes back before the p tag exists. And when that happens, then this code that is selecting the excuse is going to return null. It's going to say, I don't know an element with an excuse. And it's going to give you an error. So that's why we say window.unload, because window.unload waits for everything to be finished and allows JavaScript to be the last one to run. And that's what you want. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.